Hi everyone, I'm Luke. I'm Jess and this is our boss Winston. So we have been travelling around Australia for about the past three years now. We've had a few different vehicles along the way, one being a caravan, one being a troopie and finally we've got our bus. Yeah, so Winston's a 1992 Toyota Coaster, uh, Gen 2 shape with the 1HZ motor and he's got 450,000 Ks and we consider that not much for a 1HZ motor. Winston started his life as a school bus. Yeah, he's got, kind of gone from like one extreme to the other, being a Catholic schoolboy to a nomad. <laughs> school bus to a home. <laughs> yep. All right, so we're just going to take you guys inside. We'll also run you through, I guess, a bit of a Q&A as well. Like we do get quite a few questions just about the build, how much it costs and what we use, so we're going to do that as well. So we'll go take you guys on a tour now. All right, welcome to Winston. <laughs> so let's start with the kitchen. So when we were putting everything together in the bus, we knew we wanted a decent sized kitchen in here. We decided to go with Ikea for a few reasons. One, it's really cost effective. So what we did here pretty much costs around the same as it would have if we went and bought stuff from Bunnings and Luke designed it himself. Whereas Ikea is all flat pack, so it was so easy for us to put this together. The second reason is because the storage in Ikea kitchens is incredible. So as you can see, they just have really good configurations where there's like drawers within drawers and you can set them up as well. So you've got all different heights. So we pretty much have this set up as our can drawer. They all perfectly fit in there. Below that is more dry goods. And that's pretty much our whole pantry just here which we find we can fit probably about like a week's plus worth of food for generally three of us. So we did also get the bench top from Ikea. However, we didn't really like any of the drawer fronts that they had. So we decided to go with a birch ply. This ply is from Plyco in Melbourne. We have used it previously in our Troopy, if you guys have seen that build. So we really wanted to use it again because we do love this look. And you'll see that after using it in the kitchen, we really wanted to use it throughout the entire bus build as well. So it is a prominent feature in the bus. Uh, we also have used the RV Lab handles. You'll notice these are actually locking handles. They're like the first of their kind, so they're pretty cool. They just have a self like latching technique and then you just pull them open. The ones that we have, I believe are the 100 mil plated gold but highly recommend and they look beautiful. They're a really nice finish on the fronts of the kitchen. So as for cooking with the kitchen, we went for a two burner stove. We did want cooking facilities inside the bus. Just we've got the space to do it, so why not? So this was just, I think it was about like $150 from eBay, really affordable, or it might've been Amazon actually. I'll put the link below. We also got our sink and tap from Amazon as well. We love the idea of a white sink in the bench top. It kind of gives the illusion of more space, which I think looks really cool. And then we've gotten the gold tap just to be a little bit bougie. Um, so up here, we've just got some more overhead storage. So that's just for some dry goods, a few knickknacks, cups, etc. I think having an open space in the bus just adds a little bit more to the design. We did kind of want a bit more going on because it is quite a minimal design we have in here. So that's, yeah, that's probably one of my favourite parts of the bus actually up there. Uh, and then over here we've just got this little niche. So we just use it for like our soap and dishwashing liquid, little candle a vase. We've got these velcroed on so they can stay here while we drive, which is super handy. Welcome to the bedroom. It is kind of weird saying bedroom in a bus. It's not something that you commonly see. Uh, when we were looking at the initial design, we kept playing with this idea of having a separate bedroom with the arch and it's something we did go forward with and we are so glad we did just makes this such a cozy little space. So in here, we decided to go with just a double bed. We don't mind cuddling, so that's what we went for. We didn't really feel like we needed a queen. 
so the mattress we went with was an Ecoza. We'd heard some really good things and they also like the mattress in a box. So it was a bit easier for us to get the mattress in here, get it out of the box. We could just roll it straight out and it fit perfectly. So that worked really well for us. We have also had some of the best night sleeps on this mattress. So highly recommend if you're looking for a new mattress for your bed or just everyday life. So back here in the bedroom, we have our little coffee shelf that just sits behind the mattress and looks out the window so this is our favorite little spot to have a coffee in the morning it also doubles as some storage so we've got just an area over there with a powerpoint as well as 12 volt powerpoints to charge our phones overnight we've got our pajamas and then just some miscellaneous stuff there's no such thing as too much space in a bus. So we take every little bit that we can get. Uh, in the bedroom, we've also got our Sirocco fan. So we use that literally every night. Doesn't really matter what temperature it is. It just gets some nice airflow around here. So it's very handy to have. And as well as the kitchen, we've got another niche in the bedroom. So we just added them in because I guess we could within the wall uh, and it also kind of acts like a little bedside table but at the moment we've just got a picture frame and a vase on it. All right let's move into the lounge. Okay so welcome to our lounge slash dining table slash office space. So when we were designing this section of the bus, uh, originally we were thinking about just putting like a couch lounge slash kind of single bed here. Um, but we decided to kind of go with the table and we're glad we did because it's such a good workspace. I feel like we can be really productive here and it's also a great space just to sit and eat dinner. Uh, we did still want the aspect of having a third bed in the bus though. So this table actually drops down we've got another cushion that comes in and turns this into a lounge um, above that we have this lovely little artwork that i feel like just fits the bus perfectly it's from a local gold coast artist called cody white uh, i'll put her instagram handle so you can check her out love the colors in it i just think it really suits the bus and when we came across her artwork we just thought it would be really perfect to have a piece right here really adds to the bus when you look in. I think it just adds another element. Here's something else I'd really love to show you. It's just the table leg we've got. It's really cool. Uh, we thought we'd go for like a gold leg just to kind of tie in with the rest of the brass gold look that we've got throughout the bus. Uh, we got this from Sunny Coast a Hairpin, I believe it is. He was really happy to just make a one-off for us. Stoked with that. Really happy with how it ties in with the bus as well. All right, so just down the other end here, uh, we've got our fridge and kind of more of an extension of our kitchen. So we've got some pantry spaces as well and some cupboard space. So for our fridge, we went for a 190 litre Bushman's. We really wanted a full size fridge. And I mean, when you're in a bus, you can fit it. So why not? Stoked with this fridge, it's 12 volt as well, which isn't very common. Um, so we really wanted to pop one of these in. They're also like a Victorian based company. So really cool to be using someone local and they've done a really awesome job. Uh, above the fridge here, we just have some additional storage. So this is pretty much just like electrical appliances that we use in the kitchen. So we've got like an air fryer, a toaster, a sandwich press. I think that's all that's in there. Um, we went a bit booty with this bus like, because we, our inverter can take it. So we figured we'll just get all the appliances that we can. And just over here is some more storage. So, we use this mainly for just some like winter jackets but it's also our electrical cupboard which i'm not going to touch on because i am hopeless with that kind of stuff so luke will touch on that with you later and we've also got a full length mirror which i don't think i've had a full length mirror for years now just living on the road so this is really good to have it's nice to actually see what you look like when you put an outfit on and you don't look like an absolute freak so next up is this little area i don't really have a name for it pretty much when we were doing the lounge we just didn't want to extend the lounge too big it would have been probably a waste of space as well as looking a little bit odd because it is such a big area so we decided to just build an extra little cabinet here 
So it's actually a really handy cabinet. It holds all of our camera gear as well as being like a charging area. So everything can plug into where it needs to here and it will just be on charge straight away. So it's just a safe little spot that we can charge all our camera gear like in while we're driving, stuff like that. Super handy, very good little cupboard. And then on top of here, is probably one of our new favorite features in the bus so our little breville coffee machine we've been drinking instant for about three years now so upgrading to this is like insane i'm personally not really a coffee drinker but i'm definitely getting on the iced coffees at the moment it is so good all right we will move into the front for the last part of the bus tour So welcome to the cab, the cockpit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so with this area, you'll notice that we kept the original chairs. We like the look of them. They're like a little bit retro with the brown spots. So we decided to keep them. We also don't find them that uncomfortable, so they're fine for us. So we want to utilize the front part of the bus as much as we could. So we have done a full length wardrobe here. It is so good. I can fit so much of my clothing in here. I'm really lucky that this is my little clothing area. I didn't point it out before, but Luke's clothes actually go under the bed. So other than the full length wardrobe, we've also added this overhead storage here. We actually only added this a few weeks ago. We always had the intention of doing it, but just hadn't gotten around to it. But it is so handy having extra storage. It doesn't look like much, but it honestly makes such a big difference. We use it to kind of just store like some maps and stationery. Like we've got our throws that we always use up here, some jumpers, some extra camera gear. Like we, it's just like those little bits and pieces that you can't find a home for. That's kind of where they'll go up here. And it's just so handy having them there. Or anything that we might need while we're driving anything extra just goes up there we've got our little hat area over here we have so many hats so we actually need to find more space of where to keep them but that's where we've got some of our hats for now lukey will jump on now and take you guys outside and give you a bit more of a run through on some of the more important aspects like electrical and just what we've got outside all right, so it's my turn to give you guys a rundown on stuff that we've got. Uh, so as just mentioned before, in here's our main electrical cupboard. We've got all our radar controllers up here. We've got the 2000 watt inverter and the Manager 30 control panel. Down the bottom here, we've got our 200 amp hour lithium battery from iTech World. We are stoked with the system. We can run all our appliances. We've got a coffee machine, we've got the air fryer without any dramas. So really powerful system. Now that we've got our 540 watts of solar panels on the roof, uh, also Redux solar panels, we've had no dramas with running any of our gear. Solar panels keep up even in cloudy days. So on a sunny day, we can get 30 amps an hour into the battery. And on cloudy days, we get around about 10 amps an hour. That keeps us covered, keeps us going and um, that's how we stay off grid. Welcome to our outdoor living quarters. So I'll give you guys a rundown on what we've got fitted on the bus on the outside. Up here we've got the Dometic awning. It's about four meters long, so it gives us a massive amount of space out here when the weather's not great or if we need some shade. Down here we've got our three water tanks. Not really gonna get under there and show you, but we've got 180 liters of water. This is probably most of our storage. We like the fact that this boot lifts up on this Gen 2 model. Um, it's given us the ability to build the bed level with the boot opening and it's given us a lot of storage space down here. We've got a lot of things in here. We've got all our outdoor living tables. We've got a ladder to get up on the rooftop deck and we've also got the gas bottle mounted under here. Our gas hot water is also taking up room in the boot area and some of the cabinets protrude into the boot area from inside as well. So yeah, a lot of you are probably thinking, why haven't we put a shower inside? A lot of people do put showers inside. We feel like it takes up too much real estate on the inside of the bus. It's going to really close it in. We like the open feeling. We like to have our room inside. So we've put our shower outside. So we've got the um, 
shower tent here. It gives us a good bit of privacy. It's about a meter by meter little cube. This here is our shower. So, so the shower's got uh, heaps of water pressure and it is also hot. So the two most important things of having a shower. So when the cubicle's out, the shower head sits up here and we get a nice good bit of shower pressure going. And this here is, this is our hot water unit. Not much to say about that. Heats our water up for us. Welcome to our rooftop deck. The deck takes up about 50% of our roof and the solar panels take up the rest of it. Um, but the deck is huge. We've had like about five people up here before. It's pretty, pretty solid. And we also store our surfboards up here. So we just strap them on through the deck. All right, so we hope you all enjoyed the bus tour. Yep, and now we're gonna do the Q and A. So answer all your questions. Yeah, so we, yeah. we did have some questions that we felt like we answered in the tour itself. So we're not gonna answer too many. We don't wanna waste your time. So we're just gonna kind of go with like the ones that we are asked the most. So we will get started with how much was did all this cost? Yeah, so good question. The bus was 14K to purchase. And then we mm -hmm. spent about another 15. Yeah, we think about 15 on it. Yeah. Um, the build. Which is literally everything that you see. This, like, keep in mind, this was a school bus, so we had to start from scratch. Yeah. Um, we did also have some partnerships yeah. in the build, so, so we were that super saved lucky. us a lot of money. Also, we had friends, so I did some work for a, a mate, and then he did work on the bus as well. So. Yeah which was definitely handy. So that saved us some money, but in saying that it can be done cheaper, it can be done a whole lot more expensive. So I guess it just depends where you want to put your money. We were happy to spend a little bit more on certain things in the bus, but if you went basic, holy shit, you could do it so cheap. I think you could do it for 10 if you went cheap enough. So next question is, where did we find inspo? Just everywhere, I guess. Um, <laughs> so online, just looking at furniture, like Pinterest, yeah like yeah pinterest was probably one of the biggest ones like mm. i love a bit of pinterest i just made a board that kind of had even like home interiors that we loved and then we just saw like looked into how we could like adapt that into the bus it was obviously we like ply is our biggest kind of like design feature of the bus and yeah that was yeah. we pretty much just yeah went from there and also on instagram so other bus life is I yeah guess. there's some so, really cool people out there yeah. we are really bad with names off the top of our heads so we might just give you a list below one big one for us and that really helped us was slowly salty like dylan and kelly are onto their second bus now that they live in and they're just such gurus they're really really smart with what they do and their buses are incredible to the point where dill's actually gone into like now doing buses for other people which is awesome so yeah if you're someone that isn't hands-on and you're in Oz, definitely hit them up because he definitely knows what he's doing. Big inspiration to us. Um, so with what we've done, would we change anything? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, bitch. No. We're not changing anything. No, we're like really happy with everything in the bus. Um, the layout's perfect. Like, I don't know, it just it just all really worked out. I don't know if it's because we lived on the road in two different types of vehicles before this and we just knew what we wanted, but we just really stoked with it. If anyone needs a, like a design idea for your bus, copy ours, go for it. Go for gold <laughs> because it fucking works. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we all fit perfectly. Uh, favorite feature of the build? Oh, yeah. So mine is all the ply. All the birds fly through the whole bus. Yeah, the fly is very cool. Yeah. I think if I had to choose one thing, my favourite is definitely the archway. Um, it's probably the thing that gets compliment complimented, <laughs> <laughs> complimented the most. Uh, but it's just, yeah. It I don't know, it's just cool. something different. 
and I love that our bedroom's separate. Like we've got our own little nook, which I think is really cool and special and cozy and yeah. But yeah, archway for me definitely. Um, so, do, 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 do. okay. So what is our bus registered as? Slash, how much does it weigh? So we are registered as a panel van with the windows, and we did that so we could have the bus under 4.5 tonne and drive it on a car licence. Yeah, so basically when we got the bus, because it was a 22-seater, it was like a light rigid vehicle. So we basically had the option of either trying to convert it into a motorhome and get it recertificated as a motorhome or replated as a motorhome, or go for a C-class as a panel van, which we were happy to do. Uh, it's honestly personal preference we just didn't really see the difference in going for a motorhome versus a c-class there's just a lot of things that you need to do for a motorhome that we didn't really want to do well we pretty much have done but it was just an extra cost so panel extra van hassle. with windows it works just fine yeah. <laughs> it's perfect and i guess coming in at our full weight fully loaded we're at 4.42 so we're just under our weight limit, I guess. But we do have a lot of things in here that we can remove. Yeah. We could be, we yeah, to. we could weigh less if we wanted to. We got a we lot just, of stuff. We just put as much stuff in here as we could. Mm -hmm. On that as well, if you are building and you think yours will be over 4.5 tonne, you can actually keep your bus as a light rigid. It's just you need a special type of license, which is pretty easy to get. And there are a few other rules that are a little bit tricky. Yeah. Just with like toll roads are expensive. You're actually not allowed to park on a street for like longer than an hour or so. It's just, there's some weird rules. I don't know, you could get away with them. Um, but I mean, we managed to get, like for a coaster, it's easy to get under 4.5. If it's going way over, I would question maybe the materials you're using, try to use more lightweight stuff. But yeah, ours is under 4.5, so stoked about that. So we might just wrap it up here with one more question. Um, and that was, what was one of the hardest parts of the build? So if you've watched our vlog series, you'll know that we lived in the bus while we built it. And that was probably the most difficult part. Yeah, I mean, we were lucky that we were on a friend's property for the duration of the build. But if we weren't, we literally would have been like camping at Ikea and Bunnings car parks while we were building. So it would have been, been a little bit rough. Uh, so yeah, that was probably the trickiest part. Was there anything else? Um, oh, probably the fact that there's no level points, no square points, no yeah, straight true. edges throughout the whole bus. So you're basically just, I don't know. You're, yeah, it's very hard to get straight lines and make perfect cuts because it's mm. always like you need to, like, I think Luke mate would make a template for a template for a cut. So it's just really hard to work with the shape, especially where we didn't do like overheads on one side. It's just kind of hard to get your cabinetry to be completely flush. It just takes time. And even then you're in a bus and you move and like the second we drive, something moves, like as in something structural, I guess. So oh. you get cracks and no, just as in like, you'll get cracks, It'll things be like shift. Where, it's like where the joins are, yeah. where we put like no more gaps and stuff and kind of all the no more gaps just wiggle out and then you got to put that back in so. so i mean it's probably just part of it but from what you see like in video and online where our bus probably looks perfect if you saw it in person i mean it's not perfect there are things that aren't straight <laughs> little lines that aren't perfect but you know what it adds to it <laughs> but i think that pretty character. much wraps up this whole bus tour we hope you guys enjoyed yes Thank you for watching. Yeah, thank Please you for watching. like and subscribe. We need your support. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, like also if you guys have any extra questions, either it's ask us on Instagram, ask us on YouTube. We love chatting, whether it's bus, photography, anything. So yeah, hit us up. We'd love a chat. If you've got any questions, just send them our way. We hope you enjoyed it and goodbye. Bye.